Hey there, I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And it's time for... I'm Spun. <laughs> You're jazzed. Why are you so jazzed? Oh, uh, you know, it's summer. It's beautiful. It's sure. super hot. You know, uh, everything's I, positive. Everything's positive. Life is good. What can you complain about? Eleven oh, hundred more. <laughs> Eleven hundred more uh, affordable housing units. <laughs> 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 is this a Sorry. re-announcement Cough of a there. re-announcement of a re-re-re-re-re-re-announcement of something that uh, we announced? Last, just before we left, I think a year ago, not in 2018. When you say we, you mean? There's a city council in Vancouver, and Gregor did a press conference announcing all these sites and that they would be developed. Uh, I guess the difference is the federal government is officially saying they're coming with all this money. But then the real money is really not money. It's a loan. So there's only, I think, I was looking at 69, they're saying there's 140 or whatever, 200 million, 184 million dollars. The mayor of Vancouver saying it's quarter billion dollars. There's, <laughs> but really, it's it's a sixty, it's a hundred, it was a hundred and fourteen million dollar loan, uh, and sixty four mil, sixty nine million dollars in direct funding. So really, it's sixty nine million dollars in direct funding. And I've also heard that that funding actually might go to BC Housing, not to the city of Vancouver, or directly to the developments. So the money will go to BC Housing, which means seventy five percent of it will get lost in bureaucracy, and then twenty five percent of it will end up in the housing. So really, it's a loan, it's a low interest barrier loan to the city in an election year uh, and it's a re-announcement of projects that we were already uh, they're already slated to be done why was the Minister of Defense part of that announcement? I was confused by that. Well, that's the thing. That, this, that comes to this whole announcement of uh, in an election year. We had uh, uh, the minister responsible, not responsible, the minister, one of them I think was in his riding, the one at southeast Vancouver, yeah. which is where the Minister of Defense... Uh, so you bring in the big kahunas from uh, yes. Ottawa. The feds. The feds. You bring, I'm surprised the prime minister wasn't there. Uh, uh, so the for this announcement, but look at this. I mean, this is how much real the estate of, got. Uh, you got for you a re-announcement. Oh, you got Joyce Murray there too. I didn't notice that. You Joyce Murray. Well, isn't everybody got, getting a goodie bag at this point? Is that Joyce Murray? I'm not even sure. Not somebody else. I think with glasses. And Mayor Kennedy Stewart. And then, uh, yeah, the Minister uh, of Defense. That's a, that's a lot of real estate for a re-announcement. Going back it to... It would have been front page, but this other horrible thing happened, I think, but uh, that same day for a terrible day for a press conference. But, yes, so it's a, PR, it's a PR play for an election year in a specific riding for a candidate who could lose uh, as a swing in a swing riding. That's been a conservative riding, liberal riding, conservative riding. He's a popular minister, um, but uh, he could lose that riding, and so they need to give him a gift. But this is you're going to start seeing this happen in every single liberal. Well, let's talk about riding. your. I saw this on your Twitter. Yes. Gift gifts and goodies are gifts a thing goodies. when we're counting down. Yes. We're very much counting down to a fall election. And if yes, it's well they haven't dropped a writ, but obviously they have to before October. It's <laughs> obvious that we are counting down though, yes. because the good news stories are being like. I oh, know. hey, remember us when you're thinking affordable housing because we're going to make 1,100 new units and the yes. federal government's going to pay for it. And then you yeah. unspin it and it's like... I know. Well, oh, actually, the Sun and like Globe and Mail did a good yeah. story. They both did good stories uncovering this, saying, yes. you know, this has been announced before. Uh, this is not news. Uh, and they broke it down, which was really good, actually, because uh, sometimes uh, I would get frustrated sometimes by reporting that didn't look back when Gregor was doing these kinds of things. In this, Dan Fumano did... Mm -hmm. Say this is a re-announcement. You just got to get past the headlines. Headlines can but be But it's tricky. effective. This stuff yeah. works. Yeah, it, this, it works for re-election. It's it's a PR play. It's an election campaign. So let's say let's break it down a couple of ridings. Let's say okay, what's another potential swing riding? Ken Hardy's riding out in Langley, Surrey area out there, Port Kells, I think it is. That's not traditionally a riding for the BC Federal Liberals. So what are we going to announce out there? I don't know. SkyTrain maybe extend money for the SkyTrain out to Langley uh, through Surrey. Maybe some light rail. Maybe sure. some more buses. What do people want out there? Maybe another bridge? Is there another bridge to be built? Is I don't there know. a canal? What is what is, is there a uh, waterway? <laughs> exactly. And there's a Burnaby mayor or a Burnaby MP whose name escapes me right now. We wrote it down earlier because what's interesting? Yeah, Beach. There's some. I, I've heard a bit about him. He's so he, he, maybe, Terry maybe, Beach. Maybe Terry Beach. Maybe he'll get uh, he'll get a, a gondola to SFU. Why they were they they have talked. Let's about announce that, that again. Uh, they did. And then there's was another week, what, yeah, a week was. ago, 10 the days provincial ago? The provincial government saying yeah. they're into it and, and, yeah. and TransLink wants to do it. It's actually a good idea. It is a good idea. Um, but Not everything's about it. See, and that's the thing. We, it, 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 it bears 
us pointing out that everything we unspin isn't us slagging what's happening. No. In fact, oftentimes we're like, yay, do it. But I mean, how many times have we had a, a new crossing at the Massey Tunnel <laughs> announced and nothing's happened? Yes. Like not piles of dirt there, that's all there is exactly. now. And, but we've had how many ribbon cuttings, how many Shovels it's in hard the ground. not to get like, cynical, I think. It, for, it, but right. I'm always surprised that it still works. You know, pavement politics, they call that kind of thing, where, oh. you, where you're, you're announcing, announcing uh, roads and bridges. It's Is that like immaculate politics. construction? <laughs> yeah, immaculate construction. That was an interesting article I tweeted out this week, and we talked a bit about it. Jo oh, George. Underscore. Affleck on Twitter. You gotta follow George. You can follow me, too, at Jody Vance or Unspun Podcast yes. as well. But underscore over here, George underscore Affleck. Holy cow, did you get into it? This was an uh, <laughs> interesting story that was in the New York Times. They're talking about American development and how developers have now become the, the devil, the enemy, the enemy of the people. The enemy of the people. Yeah. And they're sort of un, un, unspinning or trying to figure out why has this happened? And there's uh, and this whole uh, NIMBY movement that's happening every, in every major city, including Vancouver, West Van. Or BC uh, in general. Yeah, in Toronto it's happening. Everywhere it's happening. And then they talked about how to these NIMBYs saying, how do you think the home you lived in was built? It, it, it wasn't built by immaculate construction, which I thought was a great phrase, because it, it didn't just phrase. appear. There's my home. I don't know how it got here. I'm just going to move in. It was we built live, we by live developers. In old growth forest land. <laughs> Is it's where we live. Pretty sure these houses, big fat trees uh, don't were here think before. The us. concrete towers were here before, or the social housing, or housing built by ministries, or housing built by social purpose groups, or housing built by private people, like co-op housing on, on the on the on the, on the uh, False Creek area. There's you know housing that was built co-op housing by private money. Uh, this stuff is done all the time, and we have to understand that that building homes is done by developers, uh, and those developers are diverse in their scope. And some of them, yes, they want to make money. What a concept. Most business people want to make money. And so you have to respect that the person who built your home likely, more than not, made money when they built that home. Well, let's, yeah, let's hope, because that's, we live in a society where everybody wants to Last I checked, we live in a market economy, yeah, right, capital into uh, capitalistic. Uh, but economy. is there any the D word, the developer yes. becoming the the anti of all things for many NIMBYs and and others really just people feeling disenfranchised, feeling uninvolved. I mean, for us, most recently, it felt like that happened with the prior mayor. Yeah, I think there's been a, I think there's been a, a bunch of things happening at the same time. We've talked about this in the past, where there, the the social housing that was provided, built in, and and the mar and market rental housing that was built in significant ways in the 60s and 70s stopped being built in the 90s. We also changed our uh, policies related to institutionalization, so we have a lot of people living on the streets now, uh, and so people are looking for places to blame. And government, of course, doesn't want to take the blame. So even governments, especially uh, uh, people who are not in government but are fighting the government will often say that it's it's the developers and it's their fault. They, they're all about making money. They're the scapegoat. They're the scapegoat. And I so think when that, the that's social the challenge. They become the devil, as this article pointed out. Immaculate construction. Immaculate construction. So Does back, not happen. Back when, Doesn't the, exist. when those rental stocks, as you pointed out, we've had this conversation many times about that building boom where all of those rental apartments that really were made for you and me and mm -hmm. of that era because yeah, well, that's when we were having our wild and wacky rental times <laughs> um which they were they were quoting fine, except uh, for, yeah. a certain leader not yes i know Please no that's me. not don't attribute that to us that was me mocking just a little bit uh -huh. that misstep which has yes. been identified mm -hmm. as a misstep but to be a wild and wacky renter today versus one back then is very, 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 very different, which is why that statement got so much backlash. What was it back in the 60s, 70s, I guess it was the 70s, when those stocks were being built, those mm -hmm. rental stocks were being built, developers must have been making money. There was a tax incentive program that Pierre Trudeau brought in in the early 70s. That was Why wouldn't we just do that, that again? That gave you a tax deductions and to build rental housing. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why uh, Justin doesn't look up his, his <laughs> dad's worked. history. But it worked. What did, what did dad do? But why not? <laughs> like, give it a shot. Like, you said, I think it was even last week that you said some of these things that we keep studying about creating affordability when it comes to rental stock or even yes. owner stock is try something. Mm -hmm. Let's stop talking with the photo it. ops and talking about it and actually 
moving I just don't think that, I think Canadians, as a, 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 in general, if we all say this is what the money's for, yeah. and you have a direct correlation to, between the dollar that you give goes to, the, to, to I mean, I, I like taxation that is direct to the, the cause, whatever that might be. So if you're going to give an extra $10 as a taxpayer, and with 40 million people, that would be a lot of cash. Let's see where that's going. Let's see some results. And you say results. that's going to housing, and then you'd see a big difference. But I also think tax incentives for businesses like my I make money if I have an incentive to donate money that is really a good do, a, a good incentive then why wouldn't I give some of my profit to to something that I think is important and somebody listening right now just went most people wouldn't do that most people don't have that gene but it's that, proven that, that in the 70s saying, they did they right, did in the 70s people are scared and greedy now and I'm not saying everybody's bad but I know a lot of people that used to give a little bit and now are like I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring I'm mm -hmm. going to squirrel that right over here yeah there was a I think I saw something yesterday that the percentage of donations is down like it's a huge amount percentage over the last 10 years like 70 percent unless you're super donations. wealthy and you're going to like this Trump event did you hear about this you did right the the, the guy yes. uh, what's his name uh, oh Ross mm. Amanda What's his name? The, the, his last name's Ross. Owns. So he's the chairman and owner of the company that owns Equinox and Soul Cycle, which most people who join a gym will know those names. And Chrissy I think Teigen. They, I think Amanda calls that living hell, those things, by the way. She, yeah. Because she's ridden those. Uh, they're not fun. Those bikes yeah. are you ride for an hour and they scream at you. It's like, can they put turn lights? Yeah. Stephen Ross. Stephen Ross, thank you. They turn but the lights down and say, start cycling. That's right. Faster! Faster. Uh, Chrissy Teigen Stand and her up. 25 million followers. It, it had come to light. I get a, a regular email from popular.info, Judd Legum, who yes. uh, writes I just a, signed up for today, actually. It's really yeah, good. good. It's really good because he talks about the stuff that's actually happening mm -hmm. while we're all distracted by sparkly things and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, things that should be in the headlines. And yep. this was one of them where this company that is the governing or owner of SoulCycle and Equinox are very, if you Google it, their, their uh, ideals and their vision Social and their marketing is all very liberal and inclusive. They love all people of color and they love the LGBTQ. LGBTQ, I saw that. And it, there's like, the, the, the ads are very much geared to exactly that. And yet, the principal shareholders, Stephen Ross is going to hold holding a party for the guy who's anti, clearly uh, anti he's LGBTQ a he's and a racist. being, you know, racist and a homo. You know, he happens and to be president. He certainly is supporting those groups. $250,000 a ticket for that right. event at Stephen Ross's home. Like, and so people are like, back to Chrissy Teigen, she's like, I'm out. I'm boycotting right. it. And it's corporate boycott. she has boycott. how many followers? 25 million, 25 million followers? Morgan. Almost as many as I have on my George underscore athlete Twitter mm -hmm. account. <laughs> my Instagram, I've got 300 so followers. <laughs> yeah. um, Morgan Freeman also gets Also, his, he was a bit more uh, sweary on his. I would He's never see those words. Uh, shout out to uh, to uh, Adrian, uh, um, uh, Adrian Carr, Adrian, uh, uh, Adrian, who said I'm, I'm shy about swearing on Twitter. Crook? Crook, yes, Adrian oh, Crook, thank you. Yes. We said, oh, why is George so afraid to use the, the real word on Twitter? Anyways, sorry, I digress. Funny. No, that's pretty you. funny. I like that. But, but, but Adrian um, Crook, every now and then, will drop it. Yeah. Um, so corporate boycotts. Boycott boycotts are kind of a, I don't want to say terrorism, but they're really, they're saying, you know what, let's go after these companies that we don't agree with. How do we stop these, you know, how does Chrissy Teigen and a lot of these people in Hollywood who clearly don't like Trump, 50% uh, of America does, or 43% right now, but... They are saying there's only one way to stop it, and that's to stop the flow of money to his campaign. $250,000 a ticket is a lot of cash. Yeah. And there's a lot of corporate guys who, and a lot of these corporate guys double down too, right? They, and you see this even locally in politics, uh, less now because the corporate donations and stuff has happened, but you can buy tickets to dinners for uh, p political parties. Corporation, corporate people will double down quite often in an election. Meaning they'll, they'll, they'll buy both sides. Exactly. They'll buy $250,000 Because you're buying access, and, let's be honest. You think you are. I you, don't know if how. Right. It depends on the politician. That's a good point. Uh, so but you think you yes. are. Therefore, I, I can't remember who it was that told me. Who maybe <laughs> said that in some instances, the only way you can have that conversation is if you attend the event where you yeah. made a donation to get its sure. access. But it's not, it's not overt, but it's implied. Yeah. And it's that's the politics. It's harder to be. Because uh, I was like, what? Yeah. 
And no, you're like, a, grow up, Vance. Well, and it's actually, in some ways, having events like that where people are maybe bombarding you with their ideas uh, is yeah. in a public place. And so you're usually visible to everybody and they can see who you're talking to. And so transparency is literally happening in the it, Right in, in front know, of you. And, yeah, I'm not and, saying and, it's and wrong. I'm just saying it happens and it'd be naive of us to randomly, corporately boycott everybody who's ever attended an event. It's like seeing it's the happening. little black this book. This is an aggressive move by these, it is. these well, senior, significant people in social media, and it's going to have a huge impact on their bottom line, but I like it public companies. When it's used properly, when, mm -hmm. it's, when people do their homework, you just don't randomly, willy-nilly, see a headline and say, I'm going to boycott that. you got to do your homework. You've almost got to become a little bit of a journalist. Confirm the sources. Right. Figure out where it's coming from. That's another reason why I love uh, reading popular.info is because Judd multi-sources everything he does. It, but he's the one that has gotten like some of the big company names out there of mm -hmm. people who have been advertising on Tucker Carlson's show. Yes, the hypo or hypocrisy quote off, especially when yeah. you talk about this company I would, who's doing all this uh, LGBTQ plus stuff yeah. and say how great, you know, we're such a caring company. And then you've got this jerk who doesn't live up to uh, the mandate of the company. How does that, that's a disconnect. And I think it's fair to call him out on that. Yes. You know, if that guy really cared about it, he wouldn't double down. He probably is going to buy a Democratic uh, Party yeah. you know, ticket as well. But you know what? You're out there. Your company that you are clearly in charge of. Don't give me the, their PR campaign uh, about this issue was terrible. The, the, the head of the, the uh, saying, "Oh well, he's not really that involved. He's a silent partner." Bullshit. He's like the majority he's the shareholder. He's making he, a fortune. Yeah. He opened the company. Yeah. So he's clearly involved, and he's the chair of the board, and he made a decision. Uh, against which contravenes in a lot of way the philosophy of the company he represents. That's just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's bad PR. Call Curve Communications. <laughs> it's like for a little. What are you doing, buddy? Yeah, uh, but I like. I'm going to say that for me, as somebody who lives on a budget, and I, I am very brand loyal. When I like something, I will absolutely continue to use that brand if I if I mm -hmm. like it. But if I find out that the parent company of that brand is aligned with, I don't know, the diamond trade in abusing yeah. children in Africa. Wh whatever it is, mm -hmm. I will spend my dollars accordingly. Yeah. I will move and shift. I don't know if I'd be as vocal as maybe the Chrissy Teigens of the world. I love that she's doing it to her yeah. 25 million followers. I have less influence than that. But I like the fact that when a helpless citizen, a mm -hmm. citizen who feels helpless of the way the politics are going, your money talks. Your money talks Absolutely. and how you spend Unless it. Unless you change deal. the way the whole structure of donations happens in America, which in Canada we have much more strict regulations, Thank federally, goodness. provincially, and locally now, uh, it's harder to get away with that kind of stuff and that kind of giant donations just is not possible goodness. to the parties. Yeah. But there is the third party, which, which you're seeing are the rise of uh, these super PACs in Canada. Uh, Explain that. Well, this is when a bunch of uh, like-minded organizations or people come together and then they create this nonprofit or organization and then they go, uh, they don't have restrictions of donations and then they buy they get all this money um, and they will spend it uh, in t in many ways to influence the voter uh, in the direction in of the that direction that particular they believe party. In. And yeah. so, and then they're only restricted by the uh, pre-election. They're not restricted by the, until the writ is dropped, or, or in the case of per city elections, you, the year of the election. So you don't have any transparency of what they're doing with the money. That's Once the, the elections, they have they have a certain amount of money they can spend, but it's still a lot. This might be a stupid question, but is that the stuff that got Hector Bremner in trouble? There was that, uh, when that signage with Peter somebody Wall did it on his behalf, like apparently. Yeah. yeah, and he denied yeah. it and. Uh, I don't know if it was ever actually proven, but... No, it was uh, bad PR for sure for those who just were like, yep. uh, that's breaking a rule. Well, if yeah. It, there, yeah, because it was within the election uh, period, so yeah. Uh, no, I just yeah, I yeah, was no, thinking is, in terms of how is this super this is, local. You know, this is always yeah. my argument about election finance reform: is what you what happens quite often and more often than not is it just pushes a lot of the transparency. It just makes more things more opaque. Everything goes underground or into these super PACs of groups getting together. So it's uh, still left there. and right. There's no uh, there's no it's, it's not politically left or it's everybody. They, right. they, e either side does it. Got it. Um, on Twitter at George underscore Affleck at Jody Vance at Unspun Podcast, which is a super good, uh, fun follow. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, the Orca at the Orca BC yes. on Twitter is a great follow. The Orca.ca is where you can see the video of our podcast. You can download the audio wherever or you on get YouTube. Your podcast. Go exactly. Go to YouTube and search it. Um, you're so funny on Twitter, man. You stir the pot. You stir the. I don't even know which one to start with. I'm going to flip a coin in my head. 
Well, I started the shit disturbing. It's turf. I sh- I literally, was I started the shit. Stir- I started that shit. The shit thing. How many times can you say, say shit? shit. Mm-hmm. It's doing that for Adrian Crook. I know. There you go. Um, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> the, by the way, uh, you know, on YouTube, I think it was, or maybe it was uh, st- uh, st- one of the platforms. We got an E. Oh yeah. I saw yeah, that. Yeah. Mar- Explicit. Was that for me? Yeah. Yeah. So it's because you said I can you know, be. I said shit. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bleep this one out. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, yes, sorry. That's okay. I, we're going up. The content. sewers and stuff was something that I started pushing that one a long time ago, and, y- and you did too. And yeah, became, we're, we're getting some stuff yes. done on yes. Unspun, which but is good. This I, week, th- well, you brought up a, a couple of good ones, and one that we've mm-hmm. talked about before. We'll get to you in a second in the yes. Granville Street and all that. But turf. Yeah. You uh, you're seeing turf laid well, on street level. And I brought level. this up with staff when I was at council, I and I'm it. like, why is there so many boulevard areas? The, st- the parts between the sidewalks and the street, and there's all these stratas, and I live in a strata, and our strata, and I'm on my strata council, and it's brought up every once in a while, and I'm like, no, you guess what? Grass grows if you take care of it. We have grass, we plant it, we water it, three days a week, which is the rule right now, um, and it grows. That sure just P marks from all the else and all dogs. The dogs. But you know what? That's life in Yale Town and anywhere in the city. But this plastic grass that's popping up everywhere, it's not permitted. And I don't understand oh. why. No, it's not permitted. And but the city's not and it's not permitted on your private property either. I don't You're like not it. allowed to put uh, this stuff down. Uh, it's for old school patios at my grandparents' house. That's what turf is for. I mean, it looks better maybe than that stuff, but that yeah, is the, it is the, the, the actual quality is getting good, but it's still plastic that you're putting on dirt. We which need green talk, well, space we, and grass, and if you can find grasses that are... And have you seen the skid marks on that from the dogs taking a poop, yeah, and then you can't bad. quite get it all off, yeah. and then there's like this like person stepped on it, and it's like... You <laughs> just worked shit in again. Uh. We're getting a double E. Uh. So now we're going to go... Even further down the way yes. to the Granville Street uh, conversation that we actually, Carm was really good about this from uh, Daily Hive. From Daily Hive. Mm-hmm. There were like four or five of us that were having a really great conversation yeah. on Twitter. I thought, you know what, this is what Twitter is for. Putting ideas out mm-hmm. there and talking about what might work. Mm-hmm. And every now and then somebody tried to like plonk in an activist message of some sort, and it was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's like you're talking about a t- completely different neighborhood. Completely different thing. And then, then people but started Granville, attacking me for not doing anything for Granville Street, and I'm like, I did three motions at I've council interviewed trying to, to so get Granville something So Granville Entertainment fixed. District. This is, I'm passionate about this issue. Okay, so let's, let's break it down in three minutes. Granville Entertainment District is a horror show right now. There are a lot of people investing a lot of time to try and not have it be such a horror show. Um, the restrictions on patios, the restriction on uh, the movement of people and the serving of people and whatnot is is a direct correlation to what is causing the problem. But so many ways to fix it. And the motion I put forward in 2012 was like this, the, they were about to put the, or they had put the, uh, the, the bus lines back on gravel. I said, why, why? When the Olympics were here, we removed all the bus lines, put them over onto uh, Howe and Seymour, and everybody got Seymour used to it. worked just fine. And then you could put staging. The reason we did that because you can put staging on Granville Street, and we needed to close it down completely because of the number of people. But you also can put staging on on Granville Street if you don't have power lines. Without with power lines, you can't put stages for bands, for yeah. events, for anything because of the le- you'll electrocute Electric yourself. Thing. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> so and but Charles Gauthier jumped in on our, our discussion on yep. Twitter, uh, and he said, "I he he." He didn't actually say he agreed, but he said it's an impossible. Oh, he yeah. said it's impossible to remove the buses. TransLink won't do it, and because they they'll say never it's let not, go they'll of never that let go of Granville. And I'm saying, come on, Vancouver, come on, Mayor, come on, Council, come on, everybody, come on, let's stop the. Come on, tell me why you can't move the buses off there and turn Granville either into a better walking street with a more with sidewalks that pull right out. And this all came from Carms. Post that he did about I think it was Amsterdam or somewhere, and it was this beautiful street. And he said, "Why well, can't Granville be like this?" And yeah. and it had like bands, and it had nice you know people cafes, sitting people on the sitting cafes, there, and some bikes riding by, yeah. and, and it's just like, come on, seriously, we're letting TransLink dictate the look of our city. And if enough people bring this to the attention of TransLink, that as it is today, I don't know when somebody from TransLink actually rode a bus down Granville Street. I yeah. have because when I work at CKNW, I'm at Granville in Georgia, and I come from the west side of Vancouver, and I get, I go down, yep. it's not where I want to get off a bus. No. At all. I, live right at I would and much Granville. prefer to nice get off place. a bus on Seymour, on my way down there, and get on a bus on how to come back. Mm-hmm. Granville Street has I even an walk element down in the of... Un- we, don't, well, we live down there, we don't walk down there. No, we we'll just walk down Seymour. it's got a very serious nice. security problem. Mm-hmm. It's not... And I don't say that from a, don't you know who I think I am, holier than thou. I say that as a, a woman 
who is often in the dark by themselves, trying to get home, can't get a cab, and now I'm standing on Granville Street to get a bus. I don't like it. Imagine if Move you're, it imagine so if you're a safer. tourist. One block over, it's safer. Imagine if you're a tourist and you're staying at that hotel, you land, you get off, you get out of the taxi or whatever, you took, go to that hotel at Drake and Granville, you go for a walk, you walk down Granville, and then, oh, well, this is not very nice. And then you get to uh, Hastings and you turn right and you walk down Hastings and you're like, what's yeah. happening? <laughs> what yeah. is, where am I? But then going back to your com comment about developers being the evil, uh, gentrification is also a dirty word now where gentrification yeah. of neighborhoods used to be like, well, there's nothing there, let's build it up. And then people are like protesting outside of the new pigeon restaurant on Hastings Street because they don't like how that, you know. Uh, how dare you put a restaurant that people will eat at. Yes. There's a, there's and, a and real Charles disconnect. Charles Gautier actually brought up an issue on Granville yeah. saying height is an issue and the city won't budge on this either. And I don't understand either. I don't get they that They won't go over like the three stores. 90 feet or whatever 90 it is. 90 feet or whatever. Yeah. Because and so, of sunlight so on the get street. Get some height here. Who's sunning the, themselves on Granville I, Street? Nobody. I don't recall seeing sun on Granville Street. Okay, can we? Let's. Everywhere. <laughs> I think we've hit that one yes, hard. We've mentioned all but the people. Get that on we it. Need. We're going to be tagging a lot of people, Amanda. <laughs> um, Kids Pool, huge thumbs up. My favorite place yeah. in the world. CNN Pool, was it? Best outdoor saltwater pool in the world? Correct. Very cool. As I saw that, Shout I was like... Shout out to John Cooper again this week because uh, he led the charge and when uh, is on the on the park board John to Cooper. get that pool fixed up. Love that guy. Yeah. He's a great guy. I love that guy. Um, so Kit's Pool, the only problem is that now that that's been put out there, it's going to get busier. Damn it. Uh, that's <laughs> selfish. Selfish. Okay, so my middle this week, I yes. tried to just calm the waters a little bit because I've been like on a little bit of a rant lately. Uh, this one... Uh, my son and I and a couple of friends went up to Whistler. We went to Trainwreck Park. Have you ever been there? It's a mm, hike. You've got to go. Maybe. You've got to take Quinn. You'd know. Yes, I'm known, I'm known for my outdoor ways. I'm just, no, you know, very, camping. I'm a, a No, it's a camping. very short hike. Where am I camping? Where are my You'll boots? love it. Such a smart <laughs> ass. Like, can I get calluses when what I do it, that? No. Oh. No. It's a very easy stroll. If my 15-year-old dog can do it, you can do it. I don't right? know. I don't know. Okay, maybe not. But the cool thing about Trainwreck Park is that it's tra uh, train derailment from decades and decades ago, and they needed to move the, the wrecked wreckage off the tracks to keep the flow of goods, hmm. so they move them off the side into this little area. And then years go by, they're rusted out and whatever and busted and whatever, And th but they've turned it into a destination, and it's a graffiti zone. Mm. Like it's a legal graffiti really? zone. And it is so cool. The art that's there, the graffiti that's there. People respect certain graffiti artists who mm -hmm. never ever paint over that and other places get tagged for It's just train wreck park. So I went there um, a number it's, of times. It's counterintuitive to attend the, to go there. I mean, going to, going to the train wreck park, that sounds like a train wreck. What is it, what it, but then you go there and the kids love there? it and all it is is just walking through nature mm. and it's a short, it's like a 20 minute hike from the main road at Whistler. Okay. Um, but it got me thinking I'm, I'm because down, I will, you can read my column because I mention it in the middle, all which right. is at the orca.ca, yes. you smart Alec. <laughs> um, but I'm talking about Vancouver Mural Fest and one of the reasons why I brought up graffiti is because that's kind of been a bad word, mm -hmm. gang tags and destruction of property. At, acid on windows right? and all that stuff. Right? At the yeah. time, of, uh, let's say 15 years ago, one of my good friend's sons uh, got into graffiti. He was all about it. He became quite a, a thing in the graffiti world mm -hmm. and they would, you know, talk about his art and I'd be like, he's damaging property. And then I saw some of his art and I'm like, wow, that's really, huh. And then Banksy. We, uh, Everybody knows Banksy. Don't we, though? It's so it got center. me thinking about where does graffiti go? Where does it become mm -hmm. art? And could we have a Banksy in our midst? And could we be not celebrating it because we're so busy buying $5 million mm -hmm. laughing statues that, you know, nothing against the statues. They're beautiful and they're a tourist. Unbelievable how much you hate those statues. So I don't... No. <laughs> I don't really like the 10 stop signs behind the Maritime Museum, though. I don't really understand those. And I'm sure they came with a hefty price tag. And the stacked wrecked cars down... Uh, and terminal, also not my favorite. Is that art? Public Those art. Stop signs? I thought that was actually just some no, people that's who didn't know that. Public answer. art. Oh. Same with the chairs. It gets, there are all kinds of funky, but mm -hmm. just because I don't like it doesn't make it not art, which brings me back to graffiti. Some people don't like it. You are situated here at Curve Communications, yes. right in the mural festival. Which is this weekend, so if this airs before Saturday, there's like the opening on Saturday, and there's some beautiful, beautiful new ones. I mean, there's a couple that are really ugly and that were done over the years, but you know, that art is uh, subjective. Uh, so it is. But if you go to the Vancouver Mural Festival, uh, have a look at the Hold and Courage um, 
uh, exhibit. Uh, Tara McGuire, who's a longtime mm -hmm. broadcaster here, Holden was the the kid that I referenced oh, that okay. used to do. He has since passed. His memorial, his mom has set up in the foundation that supports a young artist in Vancouver. Very cool. Uh, they've got a parking lot that has big uh, cement walls. One has Holden's face on it, uh, painted by his fellow graffiti artist that's been there for a number of years. I believe this is year four. Mm -hmm. And they've rolled out one other of the walls and a bunch of really excellent graffiti artists are coming down to do that on Saturday when the streets closed and the and the event is happening. Well, and, so it's and it goes to you know the public art, the bench that we talked about a few weeks, Patricia or, or, or Trisha Barker and, and uh, you got the name wrong last Barker. time. I got the first Barker. Name wrong this time. Barker. Not Baker. Not at all Barker. Baker. Um, Super duper Barker. She pushed uh, the agenda for the park board to get involved in the benches. And so getting, did you. Yes, I pushed that out. I kind of said, come on, park board, this is ridiculous. And they're keeping it. And they're keeping it, and they're going to look at a program for that. And Beautiful the mural picture. fest, because that was when I was in council, uh, was also about the challenge that we were having in Mount Pleasant area with graffiti and bad graffiti. And so right. how do we embrace that community and get them involved in it uh, and give them money? Same page. It? Unbelievable. What? Somebody. we got to end on that note. We didn't even mention <laughs> you that. You know, if only 43 communication staff had been dealing with that issue Way back uh, related to bicycles in... Oh, my gosh. That's it for Unspun. Yeah, See you later. Bye.